welcome back to the course on blockchain. Uh, so, in the last class, we have looked into the Bitcoin NG mechanism in details, which tries to solve the scalability and the fairness issues associated with the standard um, Bitcoin proof of work based system. Now, uh, Bitcoin NG also has certain problems because um, it is ultimately compromising with the security of uh, the system uh, in the sense that whenever a particular miner is making a leader, uh, getting the leadership of a key block, uh, we are giving the power to that particular miner to uh, introduce multiple micro blocks in the system. Now, whenever uh, we are giving that power to that um, particular miner to introduce multiple micro blocks in the system, uh, obviously that is a level of compromisation which is happening in the system in the sense that well, now you can just think of a scenario, uh, the solution I will come up later. So, the scenario is something like this, say assume that I am a compromised miner and what I am trying to do that well, uh, I got to hold of a key block uh, that is good for me, now I will be able to generate multiple such micro blocks one after another. Now, for the first few micro blocks say uh, within that time I had made the estimation that well, uh, I will be able to generate some 12 micro blocks. So, what I did that well for the first 8 micro blocks I have made them correctly as a normal micro block or as a genuine or a valid micro block, but the uh, 11 micro block that I am generating I have making some tweaking inside that. So, I am say possibly introducing a double spending inside that micro block or I am inserting some invalid transaction inside that micro block which does not get validated uh, with the existing serialization strategy of the transactions. Now, if it happens well uh, the system will be able to detect that no doubt uh, whenever the verification will be done by other nodes to adapt that micro block. But the problem here is that by the time you are detecting that the serialization order of this micro block is not valid, you have already added multiple other micro block from that compromised user. So, that indeed compromising the system, the entire system uh, which can somehow make a uh, make certain kind of attacks uh, which we call as a fork attack uh, in the in the system. So, uh, you can generate, so now all the micro blocks which has been generated in the system, uh, they will be become a fork because uh, they are not remaining valid. So, the last micro block not remaining valid that means you will be add up another uh, key block by another miner which will take care of the charge of leadership. But the additional micro blocks which has been generated by that time, they will become a fork to the system. Now, here the problem is that well. Uh, certain malicious user they can launch a cybil attack on the system. So, if you remember the term cybil attack where um, a, a malicious node it generates multiple identities and by using those multiple identities they try to participate in the uh, in the system. Now, with the help of that cybil attack it may happen that well uh, a malicious user continuously generating this kind of forked micro blocks. Uh, which are not part of the original system, but as the end user as a client or uh, for the other miners ultimately they have to process those micro blocks, they have to check the validity of those micro blocks. So, the problem here is that uh, you are not checking the validity of the system at the beginning, but you are checking the validity of the system at the end after the system has already added up the nodes or the micro blocks uh, in the in the blockchain. Now, to solve this kind of compromisation and also to look into the scalability aspect of um, the standard proof of work based protocol, uh, people have uh, explored further and multiple other protocols came into existence. Uh, so, today we will discuss uh, another protocol and before going to that we will cover uh, certain preliminaries which will be required to get a uh, basic knowledge of that particular protocol. So, the idea of that protocol uh, it is called as Bitcoin or this protocol is indeed a nice uh, combination of proof of work and PBFT based systems. 
So, whenever we will look into the details of Bitcoin, you will find out that well, we are ultimately introducing the concept of PBFT inside proof of work and we are deriving a consensus protocol which is a combination of proof of work and PBFT. So, let us look into this uh, particular protocol in details. So, this Bitcoin paper that was uh, published by uh, Kogias, Jovanovic, uh, Gailey, Kofi, Gezer and Fort uh, in 2016. Uh, that was published in 25th USNIC Security Symposium and the title of the paper was Enhancing Bitcoin Security and Performance with Strong Consistency and Collective Signing. So, there are two keywords in this uh, particular paper, one is the strong consistency and the second keyword is this term collective signing. So, let us look into this keyword first that what is mean by collective signing and strong consistency, then we look into the protocol in details. So, if I uh, go re back to the uh, requirement of a blockchain consensus protocol, we have primarily four requirements. So, the first requirement is that the system need to be Byzantine fault tolerant. That means, the system should work even in the presence of malicious users while operating across multiple administrative domains. The second, uh, second requirement is that it should provide strong consistency guarantee across the replica. So, the by term strong consistency guarantee across replica, we say that well, uh, whenever you are creating multiple copies of the blockchain and every individual miner or user, whatever you say them, they are maintaining multiple such copies of blockchain. So, we require that well, there should be a strong consistency support across those local copies of the blockchain. So, everyone should possess the similar copy of the blockchain and that is the validated copy. So, that way we, we provide a kind of strong consistency support across the entire system and on other hand the strong consistency support also helps you to prevent the fork in the system. So, whenever you have multiple fork in the system that is a kind of weak consistency, weak consistency in the sense uh, it may happen that well uh, a node can hear two different copies of blockchain and whenever you are hearing two different copies of blockchain, ultimately you are accepting the one based on this uh, 50 percent um, or better to say 51 percent majority voting. So, the copy whichever you are getting from uh, more than 50 percent of your neighbors that you are accepting as a valid copy and then you are propagating that copy further. So, that way uh, the valid copies are propagated in the network, but there is always a possibility that well uh, two different copies of blockchain are there at um, two different end of the globe and that way proof of work does not support strong consistency rather proof of work support a weak consistency. So, eventually you are ensuring that everyone will work on the longest chain, but if you take any short term ins instances within that short term instances it may happen that two different copies of the blockchain are being used at two different part of the globe which are kind of far apart. Now, uh, with this particular case, uh, our requirement is to always go for strong consistency. So, this PBFT type of protocols they always support strong consistency in the system. The third requirement is the system should scale well with increasing workload in terms of transaction processed per unit time. That means, it should have good performance in terms of transaction throughput. And the final requirement is that it should scale well with increasing network size. So, uh, if you look into the proof of work based system, so and the PBFT based system, there is a clear trade off between this requirement 3 and requirement 4. Indeed, this requirement 3 and requirement 4 is kind of conflicting based on the current set of consensus protocols that we have. So, if you look into the PBFT type of protocols, the PBFT type of protocols falls in this group, whereas the proof of work type of protocol falls in this group. So, the proof of work type protocol, it scales well with the increasing network size, but it does not scale well with increasing workload, whereas PBFT type of protocol, they scale well with increasing workload, but they do not scale well with uh, increasing network size. So, we have a kind of trade off between two. Uh, so, these are the four basic requirements of a 
blockchain consensus protocol and the Bitcoin protocol actually tries to solve this, tries to provide this a Byzantine fault tolerant system, a system with strong consistency guarantee, a system by having a proper trade off or a balanced trade off between scaling well in terms of workload that means the performance in terms of transactions per second that can be supported and scalability with respect to number of increased network size. So, uh, that was the first requirement from the uh, requirement perspective. Now, this entire Bitcoin protocol that is based on a concept called collective signing. So, this concept collective signing that was proposed again in the year 2016 at IEEE symposium on security and privacy uh, title of the paper was keeping authorities honest or bust with uh, decentralized witness co-signing. Uh, so, idea of this collective signing is something like this that well uh, among a group of people certain peoples can behave maliciously. Now, if you are getting signatures uh, from all those people in the group and if you are having a scenario where you believe that well more than 50 percent of the persons in that group uh, they are valid persons or they are uh, not malicious users that means less than 50 percent are malicious users then ultimately you will get a document with signatures from uh, most of the uh, valid nodes or most of the non malicious nodes and the non malicious authorities. So, that was the concept of collective signing that rather than signing the document from a single user, you rather sign it from multiple users. So, that at that particular place you can prove the validity of the system. Now, if you think about why collective signing will be important or how collective signing will change the shortcomings of Bitcoin NG. So, in case of Bitcoin NG, you have a single signer that means the miner who is get, uh, who is generating the key block. So, that is the single signer who is signing all the micro blocks and that is why there is a possibility that if that signer is compromised, then there is a possibility of having compromised micro blocks or invalid micro blocks coming in the system. But rather than signing that particular micro blocks by a single signer, if you make them sign by a authority that means a set of signers rather than a single signer. Obviously, among this, that set of signers one can work as a leader, but if you are making the system to get signed by multiple signers rather than a single signer, then at the beginning itself you will be able to prove the validity of a micro block. So, now you know that that micro block is not compromised because it has been not signed by a single leader rather or single signer rather it has been signed by a group of signer and in that group of signer uh, less than 50 percent are malicious. There cannot be a scenario when more than 50 percent of the signers are malicious in the system. So, that is the broad idea where this collective signing concept can solve the problem in uh, Bitcoin NG protocol. So, let us look into the details and go deeper inside this uh, collective signing protocol, the collective signing mechanism. So, uh, in summary this collective signing it is the method to protect authorities and their clients uh, from undetected misuse of exploits. So, you are not making one signing authority rather than having a single signing authority, you are having multiple signing authority who are signing or who are provi providing the validity of a particular uh, aspect or a particular document. So, uh, it is a scalable witness co-signing protocol which is ensuring that every authoritative statement is validated and publicly logged by a diverse group of witness witness before any client accepts it. So, you are ensuring that this particular statement is being validated by a diverse group of witness. So, uh, mathematically a statement is, is collectively signed by W witnesses assures client that S has been seen and not immediately found erroneous 
by those W observers. Okay. So, this is the architecture of the COSI protocol. So, whenever you are adding up certain records here, rather than this record gets validated by a single signer, which is there in case of Bitcoin NG, where the miner who is generating the key block, it is signing all the micro blocks, you are signing it by a set of witness co-signing. So, they are working as the authority for signing this particular record. So, that way this record has been validated. Now, this record you can hear in terms of blockchain, this record is a set of transactions. So, this set of transactions has been validated by this entire authority. Now, this leader, so you have a leader node here. So, this leader organizes the witness in a tree structure. So, we organize the leader in a tree structure to have a scalable way of aggregating the signatures coming from the children. So, it is just like that this particular record will be validated by this node, then by this node, then the sign from this node and this node will get aggregated at this node and it will add up its own signature. Similarly, this node and this node will add up their signature independently. They will come here, this node will put its own signature, aggregate the signature which is coming from this two node. Then this aggregated signature will be forwarded to the leader. Leader will finally put his or her own signature and uh, aggregate the signatures coming from the children and that will be work as a final aggregated signature for this record. So, rather than having the record signed by a single signing authority, we are signing it by multiple authorities with the help of this aggregated signature key. And this tree structure will actually help you to aggregating the signature in a nice scalable way. Now, interestingly, I will we'll see that later on that three rounds of PBFT protocol like the pre-prepare, prepare and the commit protocol call can be simulated using two rounds of COSI protocol. So, if you run two rounds of COSI protocol, it will be equivalent to having three rounds of uh, uh, the PBFT protocol and that way using COSI, you will be able to simulate the PBFT behavior. Okay. So, this basic COSI protocol, it uses a concept called SNOR signature or SNOR multi signature, uh, which rely on a group G of prime order. Uh, so, on that particular group, the discrete logarithmic problem is believed to be hard. So, what is the discrete logarithmic problem on a group G? So, you have a group G with certain operation. So, uh, we say this small g as a generator of group G. So, what is a generator of group G? So, let us take an example. Uh, to explain this. So, assume that you are having a group of multiplication say multiplication mod 5. So, this is a operation of multiplication mod 5 and say the generator of the group is um, assuming that it is a prime number, the generator of this group is uh, say I am taking a random number 3. Now, uh, what are the members of this group? So, this will generate a cyclic, cyclic group. So, the member of this group will be 3 mod 5, then 3 cross 3 mod 5, then 3 cross 3 cross 3 mod 5, that means and so on. That means, you can say that uh, this uh, group will contain the element 3 to the power i mod 5 for i belongs to say the state of natural numbers. Now, in this case, uh, you are getting the group element as say if i equal to 0, then you are getting it as 0, if i equal to 1, you are getting it 3, uh, if i equal to 2, then you are getting 3 cross 3, that means 9 mod 5, that means 4. Uh, so, that way you can generating the element of this group. So, 3 is a generator of this particular group. Now, 
we say that the discrete logarithmic problem on a group is difficult. So, what is the discrete logarithmic problem for a group? Say you are giving a equation g to the power x mod. So, if I take this example mod 5 g to the power x mod 5. Now, assume that you know g, you know 5 and I am saying that this is having some value h. So, given this particular equation, it is difficult to find the value of x if you know the generator, the operator that is the modulo 5 and the value of h. So, that is the discrete logarithmic problem on a group, uh, group of prime order. So, in case of a group of a prime order, uh, we believe that this kind of discrete logarithmic problem is hard. So, this not multi signature, it relies on this discrete logarithmic problem on a group of prime order. Okay. So, uh, this is the basic idea of Schnorr multi signature to generating this collective signature over a group of prime order. So, assume that g is a group of prime order r and small g is a generator of g. So, if small g is a generator of g that means using g to the power 0 mod r, g to the power 1 mod r that way you can generate all the elements of that particular group. Now, you select a random integer x in the interval 0 to r minus 1 and here uh, in this non multi signature scheme x is the private key and g to the power x is the public key. Now, we have now multiple signers who are signing it all together. So, I have n different signers. So, this n different signers they have their individual private keys x 1, x 2 up to x n and the corresponding public keys g to the power x 1, g to the power x 2 and up to g to the power x n. So, they are, these are the public keys and the private keys for the uh, individual signers. So, it follows the basic um, uh, digital signature principle that I will sign with my private key and the sign can be validated with my public key which will be available to others. Well, so, the signing procedure is something like this. So, the signing procedure is that each signer it picks up a random secret v i and generates this capital v i which is equal to g to the power v i. Then the leader it collects all such v i from all the uh, children. So, if you look into the remember this tree structure. So, the root of the tree is the leader and uh, these individual nodes are the signers. So, everyone, uh, so, so the thing is that the, the protocol works in this way that the leader gets some random secret vi generates uh, and every node generates this uh, capital vi g to the power vi that will be generated by every random nodes uh, after selecting this random secret. And here this vi is basically the private key and g to the power vi is the uh, public key. So, the leader it collects all such capital V i aggregates them as the product of capital V i. So, the leader collects all this V i and finds out this aggregate uh, with the product uh, and uses a hash function to compute the collective challenge called C. So, C would be hash of this V appended some signature S or some uh, predefined uh, shared which is S. So, this challenge is forwarded to all the signers. Now, all the signers they send the response R i, R i is equal to V i minus C of x i uh, and the leader it computes the aggregate by combining all this R i. So, this R i uh, leader compute the value by combining all this R i's together which is equal to R. Now, the combined signature is now C and R. So, the C that we have got from the challenge and the response where every node has uh, found out this value of V i that becomes uh, that, that aggregate of that particular response that means the sum of that becomes my signature. So, this is the signature which is there. Now, verification procedure, procedure is something like this. 
So, you generate the verification q y. So, if you remember g to the power x y g to the power x i is uh, the uh, g to the power x i is the uh, pra x i is the public key. So, earlier we had uh, this uh, this has been encrypted or the signature has been generated with this x i which is the private key and uh, which is the private key for individual nodes. Now, we have generated uh, we have generated this uh, g to the power x i. So, this g to the power x i is the public key. So, that is the aggregated verification key. So, the signature is C r. So, where C is h v appended s and r is the sum of all the r i that we have looked in the previous step. So, every node it computes a verifier if it wants to verify the signature it computes this v v which is g to the power r y to the power c. So, that is the parameter it computes uh, with the help of this y and c r. So, this signature is available and y is available to the verifier it can compute this caps v subscript v small v and assume that r v is equal to hash of this v appended the shared that is there sum s. So, this s you can just think of uh, the message which is coming for verification. Now, if this r v becomes equal to r which was there as a part of the signature then the signature is verified. Now, let us look a proof of this. So, the proof work in this way. So, you have this aggregated verification key uh, which is y product of g to the power x y. Now, the signature is C r where C is h v appended the shared document and r is the sum of all the r y. Now, you are computing capital V subscript V which is equal to g to the power r y to the power c. Now, r is if you remember r is sum of all the r i and r i was. So, in the encryption procedure r i was v i minus c of x i where x i is the private key for uh, all the individual signers. Now, so r i is v i minus c of x i. So, you put the value of r i here. Now, this particular quantity and y to the power c y is product of g to the power x i. So, that to the power c it comes to the product of g to the power c x i. Now, you just rearrange this term that means, product of g to the power c x i it becomes g to the power sum of all this uh, c x i. Now, this quantity it becomes equal to g to the power sum of v i. So, this plus this. So, this c x i sum of c x i gets cancelled up and it becomes g to the power sum of v i which is again equivalent to product of g to the power individual v i. So, this product of g to the power v i is equal to product of g to the power v i means caps v i. So, this is equal to my v. Now, whenever you are calculating r v, so this v subscript v becomes equal to v. So, the hash value that you are getting here that should be equal to the hash value that is you are getting here. So, R v should be equal to R if the signature is correct. So, that way you can verify the signature using Snor multi signatures. So, now as we have mentioned that uh, this uh, uh, 3 round of PBFT you can simulate using 2 round of COSI protocol. So, here are the 2 rounds of COSI protocol. So, in the first round the leader is making an announcement. So, this leader is so you want to sign this document S. So, the leader is making an announcement sharing this S to all the witnesses. Now, the second means uh, uh, the upward round. So, every round means one downward message propagation and one upward response propagation. So, here during the upward response propagation you are computing these values of Vs the individual uh, uh, individual small v and the caps v. Then the third uh, in the in the second round that means the phase 3 in phase 3 you are sending the collective challenge. So, the leader computes the challenge C sends it to all the nodes and then all the nodes finds out the response and sends it to the leader. So, this C the challenge and the collective response that means the sum of all these are becomes my signature. So, that way 
uh, one cosi route is used to implement the PBFTs pre prepared and the prepared phase. So, here everyone is getting the values of V1 and the capital V1, and the second cosi round is to implementing the PBFT commit phase, where you are sending a challenge and everyone is generating the response out of this challenge. So, that is uh, the basic cosi protocol using uh, the SNOR multi signature scheme. Uh, there is uh, another way you can scale up the cosi protocol further using bonnell in sachem signature so bls signature so this bls signature it uses a bilinear pairing for verification and these signatures are the elements of an elective curve group so in an elective curve group uh, an elliptic curve is uh, something like y square equal to x a q plus a x plus b so that means the elements of the group that you are generating you are generating it from an elective curve following an elective curve equation so that is used for the uh, cryptography group formation purpose now assume that this e g cross g to gt is a non degenerate efficiently computable bilinear pairing where g and gt are the groups of prime order r and assume in this groups of prime order you have small g as a generator of g now in this case uh, the in BLS signature, uh, you consider an instance of this computational Diffie-Hellman problem, uh, where you have the value of g, g to the power x, g to the power a, y. So, the CDH problem tells you that the pairing function e, it does not help you to compute g to the power x, y, the solution of the CDH problem. So, once you have the value of g and the value of g to the power x and g to the power y, from there you will not be able to compute g to the power x, y. So, that is the CDH problem which we use in case of BLS signature. So, in case of BLS signature, the key generation and the signing is uh, very simple. So, the key generation says that you select a random integer x uh, in the interval 0 to r minus 1, where you are having a group of prime order r, and here your x is the private key and g to the power x is the public key. Now, assume that m is a message that you want to uh, sign and h m is the hash of m, then you can simply sign it by h m to the power x which is your signature. Verification is through this bilinear pairing in elliptic curve. So, given a signature sigma and the public key g to the power x, you can verify if the pairing with sigma and j is equal to the pairing of h m and g to the power x. If these two becomes equal that means the signature gets verified. So, I am not going to the detailed proof of this BLS signature, you can look into the standard cryptographic book or the net uh, to find out uh, the correctness proof of uh, BLS signature. But the interesting thing in BLS signature is that first of all the signing is very simple. So, you do not require two communication round trip uh, similar to this challenge and response in normal multi signature. So, a single communication round trip is sufficient you just uh, send a message and everyone will be able to sign it. And the key aggregation is very simple. So, the key aggregation in BLS work in this way say x and y are the private keys and g to the power x and g to the power y are the corresponding public key. Then your aggregated private key will be x y and your aggregated public key will be g to the power x into g to the power y which is g to the power x y. So, that way getting the aggregated key is very simple in case of BLS and also you do not require two communication round trips for SNOR multi signature. So, these are uh, the concept of the cosi protocol whereby utilizing this non multi signature or the BLS based signature scheme you can have a collective way of signing a document uh, through which you can verify the correctness of a uh, of a particular statement or, or a particular document. Uh, so, in the next class we will discuss that how this cosi is incorporated in case of Bitcoin uh, by solving the problem which was there in Bitcoin NG. So, thank you all for attending this class.